everybody. I hope you're keeping well. It's a difficult time isn't it and lots of people are making videos and talks and that's good stuff. Keep up the communication. We're social beings. We love to be together. We love to be around each other. It's my wife Anne's birthday today and I wasn't able to go to the shop and get her anything. I had to use clip art to make her a, a card. Uh, that's disappointing uh, but it gave us a laugh and I um, wasn't able to go and get her a present and I love to get her presents that's what you do isn't it and uh, so I have a plethora of musicians around me here and there's a great tradition of the bagpipes being played here so uh, one of my lay readers in the parish is a very accomplished piper so he very graciously came and played the pipes for Anne uh, outside. We had to stand at our distance and listen to him. You do that with bagpipes anyway. And uh, we then had a bit of a chat, shouting at each other across the great gulf. He finished playing her, her uh, a lovely uh, play piece of pipe music and then uh, happy birthday. And then he uh, said, I can't give you a hug. And that's what it is, isn't it? It's very, very hard. We're social. We like it. Uh, and so God be with you and bless you through this time. Just a little thought for the day about how we practice our faith and religion. There's a great upsurge in fundamentalism across the world. And we tend to associate it in the Western world and use the term fundamentalism uh, when we refer to a certain type of Islam. However, it actually is a Christian word. It comes from, I think, and do correct me, doubtless you will, the Presbyterian Church in North America. People of good intention, and many ideas in the church start with good intention. Uh, people of good intention uh, decided to affirm what they saw to be the fundamentals of the Christian faith uh, and uh, set those out. Uh, quite a long time ago, over a hundred years ago, they did that. By about 60 years ago, the great English theologian, uh, I've forgotten now whether it was Packer or Stott, I think it was Packer, uh, wrote uh, a book called uh, Fundamentalism and the Word of God, in which he said we should not wish to be known as fundamentalists. And he was a conservative evangelical thinker. Uh, such a challenge to many of us uh, today. If I was to invite you round to our house when this is all over for a meal, I can guarantee you, you could expect a good meal. Both Anne and I enjoy cooking, whether it's cooking curries or roast dinners or whatever it may be. We like to do it well, we like to do it properly, we like to prepare and choose our produce and ingredients and take our time over it so that what you get uh, is a meal that you will remember and be grateful for. If I invited you to our house and said, sit down there, I'll bring your meal into you, and you got this, I'm not sure if you can see it. It's a particularly well-known brand of stock cube. Other brands are available. If I put that on your plate, gave you a knife and fork and said, there you are. What is a stock cube? Well, it is a desiccation, it is a reduction of many different ingredients to provide flavour and they're really clever little things and uh, many of us use them and use them to good effect and if you're stuck you can pour hot water over it and have it as a drink. Uh, there it is, it's a stock cube. It's there to provide flavour and a certain amount of the essence of a dinner. Well, you would be heartbroken if you came for your Sunday dinner and I gave you a chicken stock cube and then sent you home. That's what fundamentalism does. It is a reduction of the great smorgasbord of spirituality, faith, doctrine, mystery, colour, insight, flavour, scent and beauty that is the gospel of Christ. 
the great expanse of God's wonder, the great expanse of God's love, the great mystery and joy and beauty of God revealed to us in Jesus Christ, God present with us and working us by his Holy Spirit, a Father who uh, watches over us and loves us. And it's important that we have definitions to help us work out who we are and with whom we relate these things. It's important that we have doctrine. It's important that we have tradition. It's important that we have practice and insight and all those things. But they are only a reduction. They're only part of the great feast. And the great banquet of the Lord is what we both participate in and partake in in our Christian life and our Christian walk in the here and now. There is that that Jesus speaks of that is all about what happens here and now. And very often we throw it out and project it far into the future as a thing that will be rather than a thing that is. And Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. And the great banquet the great feast of interacting with uh, God happens here in this life as well as in the life to come. What we have here is only an amuse-bouche to stretch the uh, analogy, to stretch the imagery, perhaps in an unfortunate way. It's just a, a taster. We cannot know, we cannot see, we cannot fully comprehend the all of it. And only when we are complete in him and utterly complete in him when we go from this life will we know what it is. But here and now we have the flavour, the smell, the taste, the texture, the wonder of a banquet, of a feast. And the whole message of God's love, the whole message of the gospel is an extraordinarily wonderful, beautiful thing. And we reduce it to definitions. We reduce it to all sorts of minor issues, little things. You can, I suppose, put that in boiling water and say it's consomme, but it's not. It's just a stock cube in water. It's just flavour. It's just saltiness. It's not texture. It's not the glory of the whole thing. So let us not reduce our faith as fundamentalism inevitably does to a dried out, uninteresting, uninviting, unappetizing thing when the thing we have is the fulfillment of all our needs in the great lifetime, in the banquet and in the feast that we have in our relationship with God our Father, in Jesus Christ our Lord, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit with us.